Drew DeArmond. I hope you're doing well, man. Welcome into the game in Tuscaloosa. Always good to be on with you, Ryan. I like the intro music. Yeah, we were just having some fun. How? I mean, you doing okay this week? I mean, what what's it been like hanging out with uh, some of those Auburn people up in Huntsville? Well, I think you wrecked. Really enjoyed your phone call on my show this morning. He appreciated the sentiment uh, for the Auburn Tigers. He's looking forward to Saturday. Uh, personally, I've had a change of heart uh, with that situation. Uh, I think carry on is going to be extremely limited. If not, I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't play at all. Uh, I, you know, I like Georgia in a close game this time. Of course, I liked him in a close game the last time, and I was wrong. But I think Georgia will play better in the trenches this time. I think they can win it on a neutral field. I think it'll be a great football game. But I like Georgia by a field goal over Auburn. And right now, I just think Ohio State's so overrated. Uh, I think Wisconsin can handle them. And it's going to come down to TCU. Not sure they got enough to beat Oklahoma. And if that's the case, then Alabama will be sitting at home for the playoff. But uh, everyone's hoping that Gary Patterson can give a big assist to the University of Alabama. And to a degree, I guess, Ohio State. So I'm not sure any Alabama fans can just stomach rooting for the Suckeyes. Well, as we're talking to Drew DeArmond, we're going to break down this championship weekend. Let's go back and, and visit here with just a couple of minutes. Let me, let's me let go back to George and Auburn here for just briefly. Uh, if Kerryon Johnson's not able to go tomorrow, this is – it's huge for the Auburn Tigers. Like, I think it puts a win and takes it out and puts it on George's side if he's not able to go. Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. I mean, Kerryon Johnson uh, from my community at Madison Academy, almost 1,300 yards. Uh, 17 touchdowns. He's been the story uh, in the SEC this year. He's SEC Offensive Player of the Year. He was the difference with over 230 all-purpose yards against uh, the uh, against the Georgia Bulldogs the last time they played. And if he can't go, these young backs for Auburn are talented. They do have some talent, but uh, I just I don't buy the fact that Auburn can win the game without carry on. Uh, I know that it's a line of scrimmage game, so that's going to give Auburn uh, opportunity. But I, it, it, I'll say this, if Georgia cannot win this game and Auburn does not have carry on Johnson, then we truly know how bad the Eastern Division is right now. Well, I, I think that's certainly uh, one of those stories when you talk about revenge factors and, and all the different things when we talk about the Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, certainly they'll try to find a different game plan as we move forward. But let's also set it up. If, if Georgia wins this game, do you think the – rumors, the buzz to Arkansas for Gus Malzahn is true? I mean, do you believe it? Well, you know, I'll say this. I, I had uh, Trey Biddy on my show this morning from uh, hogsports.com. He has covered the Razorbacks for 15 years. Been around that uh, city and program a long time. He told me he, he's having a hard time getting his head around the fact that Gus Malzahn would leave, uh, you know, Auburn for Arkansas, but he, he did say there is no question he is the top candidate. The number two candidate, I heard you and Marquise kind of talking about the Arkansas search. It is Chad Morris at SMU. Chad Morris could have already been hired away from the Mustang, but he's even told uh, a, a coaching uh, friend of uh, Trey Biddy's uh, that he believes that Gus Malzahn is going to leave for Arkansas, win or lose, because he just doesn't like the climate around Auburn's program for the simple fact that, uh, uh, you know, he's on the hot seat every other week. So I do think there's a reason Arkansas has been quiet and has been waiting uh, until, until the, after the SEC championship game. I do think that if Gus Malzahn wins this game, it's going to be very tough for him to leave for Arkansas. They've got a raise on his desk. Uh, they'll be uh, in the college football playoffs. Some people may have them as a favorite. But if they lose to Georgia, I think the chances are maybe 65-70% that he's the new coach of the Hall. Let's go back to this Ohio State game with Urban Meyer. Certainly, uh, Alabama fans would like to see him win, but don't win by a big margin. You know, if they walk in and they beat this number four team, undefeated, only team right now in the Power Five that we're talking about undefeated, if they lay it on them and beat them by 17, 20, 21, 24 points, uh, then certainly you can make the case for Ohio State. Uh, but you, you don't even like Ohio State to win the game. You like Wisconsin. Yeah, I do. I just think this, this Ohio State Buckeye team is talented, but there's something missing. We know J.T. Barrett now had arthroscopic knee surgery. He's likely to play in the game. They also have Haskins. I, I don't question Ohio State's talent, 
But I do question the Urban Meyer and being able to kind of motivate his team and get them to play well. I mean, this is a team uh, that, that there's they, they, something kind of a myth. There's no reason they should have gone to Iowa City and given up a double nickel and lost by 30 points. So, uh, to me, there's something missing with this Ohio State team. I think Paul Chris uh, in Wisconsin, they don't recruit a lot of blue-chip guys, Ryan. Uh, I talked to Matt, Max Bruski on my show today. He covers Wisconsin better than anyone. They have six guys on their entire roster that were considered four-star level recruits or better. Uh, that's it, six. And, uh, and and when you look at uh, uh, Ohio State, they're littered with four- and five-star guys. But what Wisconsin does, they have a certain culture there that Barry Alvarez has cultivated, and they do the, one, of, one of the better jobs in the country at identifying guys that fit their system and developing talent. And I think when you look at Wisconsin, their schedule was not super tough. I, I, I understand that. But they're very, very good on defense. I think, you know, they uh, the week after that double nickel was laid, uh, on uh, uh, Ohio State by Iowa. Iowa gained 69 yards against Wisconsin. So I just think Wisconsin's being undervalued. If their quarterback, Horny Brook, if he could protect the football, he has thrown 13 interceptions. If he protects the football and Wisconsin has one or less turnovers in this game, I think they can win a close game against the Buckeyes. All right, going back to, to TCU and Oklahoma, because obviously that would help Alabama – any chance the Horn Frogs get the get the job done against the Sooners? I would say give it about a thirty percent chance. Uh, I think they have a chance, and they're healthier than they were the first time. Gary Carson is a defensive mastermind, but I just think when you look at uh, Baker Mayfield, he's going to win the Heisman Trophy. The way this Oklahoma offense has been, uh, you know, executing at such a high level, I think Oklahoma is probably going to win a game by get win the game by seven to ten points. I just don't – I'm not sure that this TCU offense can do enough against OU to help Alabama. But I will say this for the Tide Nation listening. Be big fans of TCU and the Horn Frogs. If they beat uh, the Oklahoma Sooners, no matter what happens, in my mind, Alabama is in the playoff. All right, so what's your gut feeling going into this before we move around and, and talk about some of these SEC happenings? I mean, do you feel like the, the Crimson Tide – gets in i mean with all things happening whether we're talking about tcu ohio state do you think the tide gets the help and gets into the playoffs what's your gut feeling what's it telling you my, my gut feeling says no my gut feeling says the final four is going to be the clemson tigers the georgia bulldogs uh i, I think uh and i think the wisconsin badgers uh will get in and the oklahoma sooners and alabama will play the miami hurricanes in the orange bowl do you realize how bad a Clemson Wisconsin semifinal game would be for TV? Oh, uh, it would be horrifically bad. I think everyone would rather see a Chapter Three Dabo going up against his alma mater. I know the Alabama Crimson Tide players would love that. They would love some revenge after what happened last year. Uh, but right now, I just don't think it's going to happen. I hope Alabama gets the gets the help. I mean, what a boon to the state it would be if Al, if uh, if Auburn won and Alabama won, and you had. Two of them in the top four in the country. I think everybody, including Colin Cowherd's head, would explode uh, if, I, if the SEC got two in. And I think it's very, very possible. But I think right now, uh, and I also think it would help Alabama if Auburn won, uh, because I think Auburn being would be the hottest team in the country and be SEC champion. But overall, though, I think no matter who wins, Georgia or Auburn, if the, if the TCU lost, then Alabama would still get in. The SEC would get two teams. But it's basically going to come down to either Ohio State winning the football game or TCU. And if Alabama can't get that help, Alabama's going to be on the outside looking in. And quite frankly, you get what you deserve because it's the old Bill Parcells saying, you are what you are. And Alabama had their opportunities uh, in the Iron Bowl against uh, the Auburn Tigers. They didn't get it done. Uh, the passing game is basically what it all came down to. They couldn't throw the football with enough efficiency. It's the same thing, the same story, but a different verse from a year ago. Uh, except this time, I don't think it had as much to do with uh, defensive injuries of the offensive coordinator uh, because it's the same story with different OCs. Alabama, against the elite defenses, they cannot throw the football well enough. They've got to get better at doing it. They had guys running open all day. And quite frankly, I agree with Barrett Jones, who was on your show earlier this week. Uh, and I also talked to Mike Johnson on my show. I don't think Alabama's offensive line played as poorly as people are trying to make it out. When you only give up two sacks to a front as good as Auburn, one of them an inexplicable sack when you kind of step out of bounds accidentally. 
Uh, and then if you rush for over 200 yards and six yards per carry, it just came down to third down. If you can complete two or three passes on third down and be uh, on third down conversions, Alabama was three of 11, didn't convert one until the fourth quarter. If you convert those two or three of those third downs, then that's 20 to 25 more offensive plays. It completely changes the time of possession. And then that's more touches for the backs if they can get those first downs. And just quite frankly, Alabama's passing game has got to improve. So, Drew, who do you put that on? Well, I, I put the honest on number two. I, I think Jalen Hurts has got to continue to improve. He's improved a little bit incrementally, but he hasn't improved enough. And I think that it all, that's what it all came down to. I think uh, by, by the middle of the season, uh, you know, I, I thought Tua Tonga Vailoa had shown enough to earn a role on the team. And I've been adamant in saying that. I've said it on your show before. Uh, I think, uh, honestly, uh, he was not going to start the season. He's not going to beat out Jalen Hurts uh, in the spring and in the fall. Jalen Hurts was coming back, uh, had Alabama 30 seconds from a national championship. Jalen Hurts deserved to start the season. But the bottom line is, uh, by the middle of the year, we already kind of saw it against Texas A&M. We saw it against LSU. Alabama's passing game was lacking, and I think it needed some spark. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, Tua Tungvaluwa, if you play him two series in each half, I think he can help your football team. And I thought at that point he deserved a, a role on the team, and I think he could have been a change-up to maybe spark this offense because if you could con- convert it, uh, some of those third downs against LSU, uh, against – uh, you know, against Texas A&M, and then uh, against uh, and then against uh, the Auburn Tigers, we're not even having this conversation because Alabama's in the playoffs. So overall, though, I, I, I'm not surprised. He, you know, he didn't play because Alabama was undefeated. Jalen Hurts, you know, the, the numbers are 25 and two as a starter. But when you go back and look at AJ McCarron's record as a starter, Greg McElroy's, uh, they're, all their records were strong as starters. I just don't. I think overall, the reason. Alabama didn't win the national championship last year. A couple of key injuries: Sean Deion Hamilton and Eddie Jackson, and then uh, and then uh, you know Lane Kiffin going off the reservation. But there was also problems with the passing game. And I mean, and you could and you and then Jalen Hurts was a true freshman, so that can be kind of written off. But now he's at the end of his sophomore year. There hasn't been enough progress, in my opinion. And I think there should be a full fledged competition between him and Tua Tungabailoa in the spring. What's going to hurt to start everybody out at square one and compete? Because I think everybody knows that two is a special talent. May the best man win. If Jalen can fight him off, then you tip your hat. But if not, then I think uh, Tua Tungavailoa can bring something to this passing game that's been lacking. And I think Alabama, everyone knows that Alabama has a special wide receiver group and that they haven't touched the football enough this season. Sure, you were a huge Jalen Hurts supporter. Well, what what has made you change? Well, I mean, you just have to continue to see Tua Tungavailoa and his development. I mean, the more he played, the more you saw it. I mean, I even like the way he, he bounced back from adversity against Tennessee. He threw the interception that was returned for a touchdown, but then he followed with two of the, the best quarterback run Alabama's had all season, faking the defender out of his jock strap. And I know the, what's going to be said, the game was already decided, but what a run that was, about 38 yards for uh, Tua Tungabailoa into the end zone against Tennessee. And then the 60-yard uh, throw and catch to Henry Ruggs where it looked like he was going to run for a first down. I think number two would have run for a first down, no question. But what Tua did, he has vision and, and just a special talent. He saw Henry Ruggs. He threw a BB that ended up being a 60-yard touchdown. To me, I would want to see the more Tua played what the possibilities were with this offense. And, uh, you know, at the very least, he deserves to play next year more than he has now because he's a special talent. He's a guy that I think uh, can – it has NFL passing ability. I don't think Jalen Hurts will ever be an NFL quarterback. I think he's athletic enough to play another position. Uh, but quite frankly, I think when you when, when Alabama has won national championships, Ryan, they had Jay Coker, a pro-style passer, through for over 3,000 yards. Why did Alabama win the game against Clemson in 2015? They won it for two reasons. One, Nick Saban outcoached Dabo a little bit with the onside kick. But two, and this is the most important factor, Jake Coker made throws down the field to match Deshaun Watson, and Alabama was able to win a shootout against Clemson. They couldn't win a shootout last year because I know Jalen made helped engineer that last drive to get Alabama the lead, but they had seven straight three and outs during that game. If you make uh, two or three more first downs in the, in the fourth quarter, even if you don't score points, you, you, you win more time of possession, then Alabama wins the game. And I think when you look back at it, when you look at A.J. McCarron, 
He won two national championships. Greg McElroy, though, I don't think Greg McElroy was nearly the quarterback A.J. was, but he could throw the football effectively. Alabama has to be able to throw the football effectively to win a national championship. And right now, Jalen Hurts is the starter of this season, only has 2,000 yards passing. Alabama's passing game is lacking. Uh, it, it needs, there needs to be more explosive plays, more vertical plays. And I think the best way for that to, to improve is to let Tua Tungvaluwa play more and let him compete for this job. Likely that's not going to happen until the spring, but it needs to happen because this Alabama program is at a crossroads right now. Drew, is there any chance you could hang on? The phone lines are jammed up, and these folks would like to ask you some questions. Uh, is there any chance sure. you could you could hang on for uh, one more segment? Sure, no problem. All right, Drew DeArmond, 97.7. Drew has filled in uh, quite nicely for me several times here on the program. There's several callers that want to talk to him. We'll take those calls on the other side as we continue. All right, let's take, uh, let's take a couple of calls here. Uh, we will begin with Morris. Morris, good afternoon. You're in the game. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Drew, I have a question for you, my friend. I was listening to you, what you were saying, and I understand about Jalen's stats and stuff like that. But in order to be able to be any kind of good quarterback, you got to have somebody blocking for you. You can't have to run and lay down. And 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 before you answer that, I want to also say something about the backup quarterback. I like him also. But if you if you've been watching the games, he do go when it's already it's all pretty much closed out. But also, you still see a little fear, a little. He take, I mean, he's not as, he's not as mature with it as, as Jalen. But uh, I've been listening to people dog Jalen ever since he lost that one game this year. They dogging him and dogging him and dogging him, and I just don't understand that. I think much worse quarterback, and there's nothing is ever said about. Him. Well, I, I wouldn't say I'm dogging him. All I've all I've said is that I felt like Tua deserved a role on the team. Uh, I, 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 I never, never have I said that he should be benched. I'm just saying he should that uh, the Tua should be allowed to compete. The more Tua plays and the more game experience he gets, the better he's going to play. In my opinion, I may be wrong about that, but I, I don't really understand why uh, letting uh, the uh, backup quarterback compete with Jalen Hurts is a bad thing. Uh, I, mean, I, I want to know. I want to know if people are afraid what might happen if they compete. I, Jalen may beat him out, man. Jalen is, is the starter of this team, and he's going to be the starter of this team through the end of the season. There's no question about that. Actually, uh, it should be. Actually, but, actually competition but, but, is good. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, it is. Good. It is good. I, and I and I, think, I think that's what needs to happen because right now, if you look at it, Morris, uh, it's it's consistent. That, uh, that, that, I, I'm telling you, the offensive line, they, they're a finalist for the Joe Moore Award. So somebody obviously thinks Alabama's offensive line is pretty good. They have struggled at times this year. I don't think they're in the lead offensive line. I don't think it's anywhere close to 2012. But I think some of the issues with the offensive line have also been when Jalen has struggled with his pocket presence. Because uh, with as good as Auburn's front is, and it may be the best in college football, I think they played well enough to give him a chance to win. And I think what happened was that Jalen didn't trust the protection at times and then kind of bailed out, and I think when he didn't need to, and if he had just stayed in the pocket a little longer, I think he could have made some throws. But, again, I'm not, I, don't, I don't question what Jalen's accomplished. I think he's done some great things. All I'm saying is that I, I believe that Tua deserves a role in this team because he's shown some talent that I think is rare, and I think, just, if, and I think if you let those two guys uh, that, uh, compete with each other, the cream will rise to the top. Either Jalen will beat him out and he'll, he'll be the quarterback for four years, or Tua Tungvaluwa will seize the opportunity and have a chance to have a special career himself. I agree, but let me let me say this much then, real quickly. You know, if that's so, then you could you could say, well, uh, the the linebackers that came after the good linebackers that went to the pros, they should have competed and jumped ahead of those guys. Nick Saban seemed to have some type theory the way he wanted to make things work. So therefore, everybody's turn is coming. And to jump him because of one game, or to say, okay, he's better, maybe he is better. I said that. But his turn hadn't got there yet. He deserves to compete. Pardon? Never said, never said he, needs, he needs to jump him, or never said he should be benched. I'm just saying that there needs to be a competition, and that the passing game needs to improve because they've got Devonta Smith here, they've got Henry Ruggs here, they've got Jerry Judy here. They're redshirting Terrell Shavers. And everyone's asked me if they played in the game. They played in the game, except for Terrell Shavers, who's being redshirted, but they didn't get targeted because Alabama couldn't get the ball to the wide receivers. Jerry Judy was open all game long in the Iron Bowl, and they were but, and Alabama but, wasn't able to find him. If they, if they I, had, maybe I they could have won the game. I agree with you, but did you see how much time he had back there? 
I've watched the game like yeah. about four times since then. Oh, I, that's yeah, not very I much saw, time. That's what I just said. The offensive line played well enough for them to win. He had time to throw. The ball gets out too late, and it's been that con- it's been that way consistently okay. uh, for for this entire season. Okay. Well, let me just say one thing about last season that Clemson game. You may reference it. If I'm not mistaken, Jalen put us ahead right, with just well, a minute or something left in the game. But it was Jalen's fault that we lost after that. No. I never okay. said that. I said that, they, that they didn't. It they didn't, they like went it. seven straight three and outs in the game, though. I just said they needed to have thrown the ball better in that game as well. He put them in but position. We, There's no we, doubt about that. But, but I mean, but they, we, just, they, they did not make any first downs in the in the fourth quarter. So should those so guys be sure to move to another position? Sir, I know. I know the quarterback position is, is an important position, but the deal is that you know we all see that he can throw when he got done. He can throw, and he's very good with his leg. And and his backup quarterback can throw, and he do his leg. But the deal is, I know through playing sports myself that if you got if you got somebody to keep trying to jump you, it, it goes against the grain. It goes against your ego. If somebody always saying this guy's better than him, this guy's better than him. We as Alabama fans and not just Fairweather fans would be, you know, we would support regardless. Regardless, and I know one loss is like a loss, like a losing season to us. I feel that way, but I know one thing: if we get in the playoff, it ain't gonna be no joke. Hey, Morris, so we're gonna, uh, we're gonna handle r- real quick, get, give me three picks for this weekend. Uh, I'm gonna pick Miami, not Miami. I'm gonna pick who's playing Clemson. Clemson, Miami. Clemson, and Miami. Yeah, Miami gonna beat Clemson. Clemson is right. just they play playing way above their you, head. Right you get now. nine points in there. Get, give me another pick. Nine and, and a half, you know, actually. I'm sorry. I'm going to pick Auburn over Georgia. All right, you, you, you got to give up. Feelings. You got to give up points there. Pick three, and uh, I'll go with TCU and in uh, Oklahoma. All right, All right. Uh, TCU against Oklahoma. Total, I think TCU total will points. Win. Total points scored in Auburn, Georgia is our tiebreaker. I was just not going to be very large. I would say twenty-seven to fourteen. All right, twenty-seven. Uh, Georgia. I mean Auburn. Got it. Okay. Thank you, Morris. I appreciate you, man. I hope you have a great day. Thank you, you too. Thanks for listening, guys. Hey, absolutely. Uh, thank you. Let's go to Pat. Pat, uh, you're on with Drew D. Armand. Good afternoon. And Drew, I'm not talking yes, about my, my favorite favorite subject. Hey, we're talking about what you're talking about today. You there? Hello. Yes, sir. I'm here. Yeah, he's okay, here. Okay, I got you. I, I, I disagree with the last caller. You're absolutely correct. Our offensive line played good enough to win the game. Decisions were not made quick enough. The ball was not released quick enough. And had, hey, let's play what would, hey, instead of what would Jesus do, let's play what would the old ball coach do. The old ball coach would have gone to the bench and got us another quarterback in there and see what he could do. Because, damn, if you still lose a game, you still lose a game. But, damn, I cannot stand to lose like that to Cal College. What do you think? Well, Pat, I mean, of course not. Everyone uh, wanted uh, uh, Alabama to win the uh, Iron Bowl. But, you know, I got to give my give credit to Auburn. I mean, Chip Lindsey called a heck of a game. Uh, Kevin Steele's defense competed at a very high level. But I think overall, and I knew going in, let me just preface this, that Tua Tungvaluwa was not going to play in the game unless Jalen got injured. Uh, no surprise there. Uh, I'm just uh, kind of and, – and Ryan Fowler can tell you, I have been on this show before, before Alabama ever lost the game. Morris was talking about I was crested in our loss. No, I, I've said that Tua deserved a role after the Tennessee game. I, I, I absolutely, he absolutely. Been yeah, I, I, I thought he should have had a role. Uh, and was I surprised he didn't? No. I mean, uh, Jay, Alabama was undefeated. Jalen Hurts had lost one game in his career. But if you go back and look at it, you know, objectively, uh, Alabama has had, they had trouble throwing the football in the LSU game. Uh, they had trouble uh, throwing the football. Uh, against the Mississippi State. Uh, yeah, and against Mississippi State, they dug a hole. They like Jalen brought them back. He, I even said, I tweeted it. It was a defining moment for Jalen Hurts. He had a great game uh, in the fourth quarter. He did his job. He made some really good throws. Uh, but mm-hmm. the bottom line is, to me, Alabama, the goal for Alabama, they, I, Ryan Fowler referred to them as the Yankees on my show today, and that's what they are. It's the <laughs> championship, and right now Alabama's having to wait for help. Hopefully they'll get into the college football playoff. I'm still not sure they're good enough because of the offense and the passing game. Uh, but, again, uh, they, they weren't able to finish the drill last year mainly, and, and one of the symptoms was the passing game down the stretch. A lot of that was on Lane Kiffin. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and, again, I don't, I'm not going to I'm not gonna put the blame on an 18-year-old true freshman like Jalen Hurts last year. He did all he could do. 
But what I'm saying is I haven't seen enough progress this year. And, and last year, Tua Tungvaloa was not on this football team. Jalen Hurts was by far the best quarterback on Alabama's team. It's been it's been more it's been uh, Pat it's, it's, it's been a it, and it's it worked out as as a in and it's been apparent because Blake Barnett uh, he went to Arizona State through eight passes or whatnot. Uh, he he has not played. Cooper Bateman has done nothing in Utah. He's sitting the bench. And then we and we know David Cornwell's already quit at Nevada after throwing three interceptions in his longest appearance. None of them can play dead in a B Western. Uh, yeah. You know, you know Jalen Hurts was the best <laughs> player last year, but now they have a, a guy like Tua Tungavailoa. It's changed. The the situation has changed. Much like Nick Saban had never played a true freshman until last year, he did it. Now he has someone that's very talented behind Jalen Hurts. Now it's time in the spring to start from square one and let the best man win. And I think uh, Tua Tungavailoa can hold his own, and it's going to be fascinating theater because I think he's good enough to win the starting quarterback job at Alabama. I, 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 exactly. And before I let you go, hey, but I just think that Spurrier would have hunted a spark that, uh, and and no. I mean, I'm not saying nothing about that. I just said a spark is what's needed. And damn, hey, it's obvious when you're dealing with a drunk. Hey, you punch a drunk, you knock him out. Hey, you don't keep expecting a different result. You still got a drunk. Okay. All right. Yeah, y'all have. Hey, a Pat, you want to give me your pick three? You want to give me your pick three? Oh, pick three. Let's go with uh, Miami, uh, Georgia, and uh, TCU. Total point scored against Auburn and Georgia in the Auburn Georgia. Total points Auburn and Georgia uh, thirty eight. I've got it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Uh, we appreciate that, Pat. Uh, Trudy, do you have time for one more call, man? Sure, no problem. All right, let's go to I man. I man. Uh, good afternoon. You're on with Drew DeArmond and Ryan Fowler. Ryan, this is the best guest I've heard break down a football game from anybody across the country, radio, TV, social networking. The dude is awesome, and he's right. Yes, he is. And I agree with you, last caller, right down to the dadgummit. Because your your guest just said, Vailoa has been there this year. He's not a new guy. And, and if you don't put – y'all are going through right now the same thing Auburn went through coming into this season. And and those down the field passes have made the difference, and that your guest is absolutely right. Now let me ask your guest something about Auburn side. Let me let me go and give you Oklahoma, Clemson, and Auburn, and the over the total points fifty four in the Auburn game. I got Auburn thirty two twenty two. All right, you want to give me your pick three real quick before you before you talk to him. All right. Yeah, o- Oklahoma, Clemson, and Auburn. All right. All right, Drew, it's go ahead. Four points in the Auburn game. All right, you're, you're on with Drew. He can hear you. All right, Drew. All right, now Auburn pretty much made Georgia one-dimensional in the last game. They took the running game away. Auburn's banged up in the running game. Auburn could be 1.5-dimensional. Do you? How do you see the Auburn-Georgia game breaking down? My feelings are Auburn's defense better than Georgia's offense. It'll be kind of the same, but football players do make plays. And Georgia would probably be somewhat more successful, but I believe Auburn's def- Auburn's offense is better than Georgia's defense with a partial running game and the passing game. Now you tell me. Well, I mean, I, and thanks for the compliment. Uh, I, I I've been fighting this kind of all week. I, I, the sentiment for me most of the week has been Auburn winning the game, but the more that I heard about Carryon Johnson, and the more my gut was telling me. Uh, and by the way, he's SEC Offensive Player of the Year. If he were healthy. Uh, I would favor Auburn by 10 in this game. Uh, I don't think he is. Right. He's meant so much to their team. Uh, if, say he's limited uh, five to ten touches or he doesn't play at all. Uh, I, I do think those other three backs, Barrett, M- M- Malik Miller, who I know well, uh, and, uh, of course, uh, Cam Martin are talented. Uh, but I just right now I would say I think Georgia's going to do a better job uh, w- of making Auburn one-dimensional. Though, if I were Auburn, and coming into this game, if I, if I knew I wasn't going to get much out of carry on, I would sort of change up the approach. I would throw to set up the run. I would, I would, right. I would, I would build off. Of that was that, was, that was my next question. Out. Yeah, I would, I would that, that, throw. That was, I would throw thirty-five to forty times in the game. I would use the short passing game as the running game, and I would see if Jarrett Stidham is ready to take this team on his back and get to the national championship. And, you know, I'm not well, ready to that, say he is, but I wouldn't be shocked if he did. 
Well, that was my next question. If these two teams are one-dimensional, who do you favor? The upper-class quarterback oh, at Auburn, the freshman, and we saw it in the, in the first round. And I think you answered that. Yeah. Hey, y'all have a great weekend. Thank you, Ahmed. Listen, I, I honestly you, agree. Man. Alabama is sitting right there, and Alabama, in my mind, is I feel like Ohio State's going to beat Wisconsin. And and at that point, I feel like Alabama should be in that fourth spot. Thank, thank you, Ivan. But, but that's just me. Y'all have a great weekend. Okay, appreciate it. Uh, well, thank you. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish my thought on that. Okay. I just have a feeling that Fromm is going to play better this time. If you remember, Ryan, Georgia had uh, two opportunities in the first half to hit deep balls that would have been touchdowns that weren't. The only, the only discernible weakness on Auburn's football team right now, I think, is their secondary. And I think that uh, Jake Fromm, if they can protect him now, if Auburn wins the battle up front decisively, if, if like I thought Alabama gave themselves a chance against Auburn with their offensive line, if Georgia cannot play better than they did the last time, they're going to lose this game. But I have a feeling on a neutral field, their offensive line is going to play better, give Fromm a chance. He's going to make some plays on first down, throwing the football, and that Georgia is going to find a way now. I, I said 27-24, which means coming down to the fourth quarter, last two minutes of the game, which means the game could swing either way. Uh, but if they can't protect from, then Auburn's going to win this game because I do think if they mix in a few runs but they let Jared Sinem throw the football, I do think Georgia's secondary is suspect. I, you know, I'm going to go with Georgia, but it would not shock me if Auburn won this game if uh, Jared Stidham can ride this this, win, this wave a little bit. But I do think that's the only way they're going to win it because I don't think we're going to see a carry-on Johnson that's near what he can be, and that is a true difference maker and probably the best offensive player this year in the SEC. But I, I'm still going to go. I, that I think that, that, all, that Georgia will find a way to run it better than they did last time against Auburn. But the difference is going to be this time they hit those big plays in the passing game that they did in a year, uh, just, a few, uh, just a month ago, and Georgia's going to find a way. But, again, it wouldn't surprise me if Auburn won this game, and that would help Alabama more. But I just got a feeling that Georgia's going to play better. But if, they, if, uh, if Georgia drops this game, especially if Auburn wins it decisively, then we know without a doubt that the Eastern Division right now it's just they, they can't uh, they can't play with the West, and we, it may not change in the near future unless Dan Mullen can light a match uh, in Gainesville. Hey, Drew, I know you've got another radio appearance. Man, I appreciate you jumping on. I didn't realize you are going to stay on for 45 minutes, but uh, I appreciate you spending some extra time with us, man. You, you, you've like a bonfire. You just throwed gas out here in Tuscaloosa. Uh, I appreciate you coming on and uh, appreciate the time. Thank you. Thank you, man. Always enjoy it. Thank you for having me.